Hello everyone. So in last uh, tutorial, we basically uh, discuss about the Spring Security Authentication Providers. But when I looked into it, I think I'm, I am missing few fundamental things in there, even though that's a very basic of the Spring Providers. But the reason why I'm adding a one more uh, tutorial to this one is to make sure that we cover that missing part of it. Okay. So what I want to cover is uh, quickly about the authentication provider interface. Um, there are a few things which uh, you should be aware of, even it's a basic, but you should be aware of it. Okay. So I'm quickly going to open the authentication provider. Okay. So I'm going to open this interface for you guys and I'm going to increase the size of it. Okay. So in authentication provider, so it can be any uh, different kind of authentication providers. And we are going to look into one of uh, one example, but there are only two methods in the authentication provider interface. And both are very interesting method in the sense that uh, they work hand in hand. So you should have the basic understanding of those one. Okay. Now the first method of our uh, authentication provider interface is authenticator itself and we pass an authentication object and there are only few uh, outcomes of this method. So first out outcome is uh, this is going to return an authentication object uh, with the credentials, uh, user credential and other details. So if you look into it, uh, we have a credentials, we have a details. Uh, so and then there are a few more things like who is the principal. So it's a so let's say uh, you pass. Uh, so this is the authentication provider and it's able to validate the user credential. So it's going to give you the fully populated authentication object. So that's a one possibility. So if everything works fine, then it basically going to give you the, uh, as I said, right, fully authenticated object, including user details, filled in credentials. And if you want, uh, you see, uh, it contains all the, the documentation itself contains uh, all the details. Now the second possibility is it's going to return a null object. All right. So the null object indicates, right, uh, that uh, it's basically, uh, it's unable to support that authentication, right. So when, when I'm passing an authentication object, it basically it's a certain type of authentication object in itself right so it, it indicate that okay this is the authentication object the first thing it is going to do is saying are you able to authenticate this one uh, do you have the capability to authenticate this one so if it's not it's going to uh, return a null object so that the our provider can pass on the authentication to the next provider whatever the provider is the uh, is the eligible providers and uh, just think about it, what we discussed in the last one, right? It's not only a one provider. There are a N number of a providers and every provider have a certain uh, responsibility. Right? They can do a certain kind of a validation. So for example, if I am uh, using a username and password as in login thing, so there is a only, <coughs> sorry, there's only a certain provider which can understand that username and password, right? Username and password, and it can validate it. Probably other providers won't be able to do that. So in that case, they are going to return a null object, even they are configured into the system. So that means it will keep on the provider is or the manager is going to uh, keep on moving it to the next uh, uh, provider so that the right provider can verify those credentials. All right. And the last option is going to send you an authentication exception if something goes wrong. Now that's a one thing, right? As, uh, just to reiterate, two outcomes, either null that indicate it's not able to authenticate. It don't, it, it's basically null indicate that this provider don't know how to validate that thing, okay? And if it knows how to validate it, it's going to fully, it's going to return a fully populated authentication object, which is basically used by the spring security we will talk about that one now the second interesting method is how do it knows that i can validate it or i don't uh, i don't have the uh, the process to validate it so this method boolean method help to or basically help to determine or take that decision right so it basically says 
whether it's for a given class that indicates the authentication object this object is this provider is able to validate the uh, the given uh, uh, given uh, process uh, given data or not all right so these are the two methods so it basically return true and false and then based upon the true or false that the provider will process the data now to give you a better understanding how it works i'm going to open one provider which is a dao authentication provider okay and i'm going to get into the abstract user detail provider all right so there are a number of methods let's skip all of those so this one right that's what i was talking about so an authentication object is given all right and then it basically performs a certain things and then return the information okay now it basically do a certain things uh, get the user information and all those things what we are not going to get into those details but the idea is it's basically performing a certain things right now what i want you to understand is uh, let's go to our other method where is the all right so that's the method which is support okay now what this mean is that if the passed authentication object is of type username and password authentication token right only then this provider will be able to validate the information so whenever we enter a username and password right spring automatically converts that into a username password authentication token so that's the token okay and then uh, basically now this provider knows that if the authentication object is of type this i am able to validate that one so these two method as i said they works hand on hand all right uh, so moving forward uh, uh, don't worry about that one we are going to talk about all these providers in detail we are also going to create a custom provider but my idea to add this additional uh, uh, section was to give you at least the basic understanding of how these providers work right it's not like every provider is executing the logic there has to be a certain workflows and that's how it works there is an uh, i'm just reiterating it again there is an authentication object and there is a method support which basically decide whether uh, this spe specific provider will be able to authenticate the object or not i hope uh, that will give you a more clarity and in the next uh, lesson as i said we we are going to talk about the uh, the different kind of uh, password storage mechanisms.